line. We have the line of the uh, gels, modeling paste and gessos uh, that was released by Prima. And they are very simple uh, to use, very user-friendly product. So if you look at the labels, you can see that they have different colors. And it's good to remember that whatever is having cold color, like purple or blue, is going to be transparent after drying. So we have the line of the soft gels, liquid gels to apply with a paintbrush, and a combination of 3D gels uh, that are going to be bore for textures. So uh, you can see that we have them in two colors. This is the two colors too. So the blue comes for gloss and the purple goes for matte. And the same with the lighter colors, gloss and matte. And then when we have the modeling paste, uh, this dimensional effects. One is called light paste, so the yellow, and the uh, um, modeling paste in orange. So uh, they are staying right after drying, that's why we use the different color palette to show them uh, in a different way. And of course, they also work for dimension. Then we have the line of gesso, heavy gesso in black, and heavy gesso in white course, very user friendly. And we also have just in clear and a couple of specialty pastes that I will be showing to you in a moment. So what are the gels and what are the pastes? So let's start with the this soft gloss and soft matte gel. And they are very similar, only the finish is different. So I will show you on the example of the soft uh, gloss gel. When you open it, it looks like whitish uh, liquid that is easy to spread with a paintbrush and the first thing you can use it for it's a resist so, sorry that was dirty uh, it's for the resist effect my paintbrush is for sort of black color you can tell that again okay so you just spread it like a varnish on the top of the papers and after drying this is going to resist to the sprays. <laughs> so, I made a sample before. You can see how glossy it is. This is the uh, soft gloss gel. And to show you how it reacts with the spray, spray bottle here, nice orange spray. So you can see wherever you apply the color, it stays nicely on the paper and then on the side of the gel it's totally resistant. So you can dry it as it is and get these nice puddles of color or you can clean it off and create the effect uh, like this. This is one of the things. It's also very good glue. So if you have the will to take, um, take it and use it as a glue for paper, it's super easy. Let's take some pattern paper and the same way as you use any kind of paper glue you can just use it for any kind of flat collage techniques and you can put it under but you can also put it on the top if you want to varnish it and make it more solid so for people doing the uh, uh, collage techniques when they layer a lot of papers when they cut out and they glue this is very convenient because it's both the finishing and both the, and the glue. <coughs> uh, what else? If you are interested in doing transfer techniques, you can also use it for transferring, which means you will need an image which was printed on the laser um, printer or uh, the one from the photocopy machine. And then, of course, uh, we need to prepare the background, so you create the background you want to transfer it to, then you apply this gel, then you put the image face down, Make it sure it will stay so you really press it nicely. Then when it's dry, you spray water on this paper, wrap off the paper and the image stays. So uh, this is one of the techniques which is done with a lot of uh, different gels. Our gel is also good for it. So that was, uh, that was one of the ideas. And what is also important when you have uh, our other products called Art Extravagance Crackle Pastes, they create a very nice vintage metallic looking crackle or white crackle. You can use it as a sealer on the top so it will varnish it and your crackles won't go off by accident uh, when it's going to be 
uh, when they're going to be dry. So again, soft gloss gel is for flat effects. So it's for resist. It's for gluing the elements like papers and keyboards, and it's for varnishing, and uh, again for transfer techniques. So it's also a good base, good base to create the uh, nice effects with fine glitters, uh, with uh, some uh, custom paints. If you you can even add it to the acrylic paint and make this paint thinner. So this is one of the acrylic paints. This is silk, very deep orange. But just to show you what happens when you mix it with the acrylic paint, for example, let's take the mat now, or maybe like the gloss because I have no energy to open it. Okay. You want to make this paint a little bit more liquid, so you can apply gel to it, and then create more watery more smooth version of the paint so for example if your paint is too dry it's getting too thick you can also use it to make the effect smoother to help the paint uh, paint better yeah so this is the soft gel again yeah and of course if you put the um, uh, glossy the soft gel into the paint, the effect will be glossy. If you put the matte one, your, turn, your paint will get more matte after drying. That's, uh, that's the uh, usual effect. So that is the soft gel. So these are the elements you can do, the ideas you can use it for. Then we have from the same family, we have 3D gel. So this is the one I would suggest using uh, for d texture and dimensional effects. So I just threw it away if you don't mind. Um, so we've got again matte and matte comes in purple label and we have gloss which comes in blue label. And they look more like solid paste but it's not very thick because it was formulated mostly to be mixative for custom version of the gels to create special effects. You can use it for similar um, reasons. So you can apply it. You can apply it on the uh, on the paper, and then, uh, for example, you can apply it with the stencil. So this one will be great to create the dimension, and it's smooth and easy to apply. And you can say gel is getting to get getting transparent when it's getting dry. You can see it's not very white. After drying it goes totally clear. So this is just an example how nice high effect you can get. This is the one I have already dry. It's very glossy. This is the effect which was done with the uh, 3D gloss gel. So that was this one. And there's a version that is smart just to compare, you can see the effect is totally different. So, uh, if you prefer more vintage looking, like almost like wax finishing, you may like the 3D matte better, but if you like this shiny effect, you may like the gloss better. They have the same quality, so they do exactly the same things, but just the finish will be different. So what do they do? Uh, first of all, they are uh, good enough to be used as glue for dimensional elements, right? So when you will look uh, on some of my projects I do uh, during the classes, you can see I use a lot of textures. And to show you the example I was working on yesterday, these elements were glued with the 3D gel. Of course, I had to dry it a little bit with the heating tool. I, I let it dry before I start painting. But all these elements now are really nicely buried in the background so you don't have to worry they will fall off. So that is one of the things. Uh, this is not super solid, which means uh, this drying time may be a bit longer than you, that you would wish, but this was formulated to be a mixative to other elements, so it would be too thick, it would be hard. So the glue is one of the things. Texture is the second idea. And then they are, of course, also resistant. So you can create resist effects similar way as with the soft gel. So if, for example, we will spray some color on the top, again, they will do exactly the same thing. This gel is going to stay as clear as possible. So you can dry it as it is, 
and you may like it. Or after drying for a moment, just try it here. You can just clean it off and get totally clear texture that will be very nice for some kind of collage techniques, some kind of journal techniques, uh, if you prefer to do it this way. So, again, just come with a baby wipe and it's going to be 100% transparent. Okay, so that's a glue, that's texture, that's resist, but also it's going to be a mixative. I'm going to show you in a moment. And from the same dimensional family, we have the products that are white and stay white. And we gave them different colors. They have orange and yellow color, which means warm colors mean they are solid. And they have the solid white color after drying. So we have different two different pastes. A light paste will be easy to compare to something spongy. People say marshmallow effect. And uh, modernic paste will be more rubbery. Maybe a little more like bubble gum, right? So that will be the orange modeling paste, like this, right? And then this one, more spongy, is the light paste, okay? And then when you look again on this project, the first texture I created here in the background with the stencil was the modeling paste like this because later it was painted many times so you can't really see if it was clear or if it was smart uh, but and, uh, this was the modeling paste and what is great about the pastes and the gels they're all flexible after drying so you don't have to be worried that when you will move your elements when you will be playing with your final project it's going to break okay so this is important they're like rubbery uh, so, what happens with the pastes? Pastes are also very easy to apply. So, I showed you the effect with the same stencil I was using just in a moment. This is the same stencil, and this is the bubble stencil I was using. So, uh, just to show you how easy it is, I will use a lot of baby wipes today. Okay, so let's say we will get this. Modern paste to so the bubble gum, and then you can apply it to the stencil. And of course, the thicker coat you apply, the thicker effect you get. Right? That's also important. You can make it really thin if you want to. Just the strokes. You can apply it with the palette knife. After drying, it's all going to keep the shape. And it's possible to paint it, it's possible to mix it with other colors. So again, if you will plan to mix it with acrylic paint, you need to remember this one, because it's white, it will make the colors slightly whiter after drying. So when our gels, well, the, color, the colors will be just the same with the paste, the colors will get whitewashed. So let's mix it with orange. Okay. okay, so this create this way you can also create the custom version of the color paste if you want to. You can see in the end that's slightly lighter than the color in the jar, but um, it's still very vibrant. The color was very vibrant, and it's going to stay in this color after drying. With the gel, the color got gets totally into the uh, gets back to the color of the original paint because transparent right and this is white so again if you prefer to create colorful paste or colorful gel you just add the paint in it and then you can try with inks like very very uh, vibrant inks you can try with pigments you can try with acrylic paints just remember the difference transparent gel don't change the color paste will make it more white okay so what happens when you uh, apply the colors on the paste well oops. they are going to be more and more they're going to be a bit resistant You're good okay, so for example it's 
this is black. This is not the best color to show something. Okay, so this is the light paste. And now you decide what you do. If you prefer, you try it as it is, and you can see it will stay a little bit on this spongy effect. So when you try it, it's going to be a little bit more colored. So you can create really interesting effects for different kinds of projects. Or if you are willing to see the white, you just clean it off. Okay? So that is a little bit less resistant than the gel, but still it resists. And the same happens with these ones. Right? <coughs> if you spray on the top, <laughs> the smoothening paste will be resistant. Okay, so that's very nice. And because uh, this is white, this may be a solution when you work on the colorful background and you have you want to have white pattern and then add the color on the top, modernic paste will be better because it will always be white, right? With the gel, this texture would be clear, so you would see the background through it. So that's nice solution still. So uh, that's what is about the paste. And now, what you can do with it, some special effects. The special effects, for example, we made the mixing with the colors, but we also can mix it with our line of art ingredients. So, for example, glitters. We can mix it with. Art sugar, which is ultra fine glitter. We can mix it with glass glitter or beads. And all these having the grain in it should be mixed with something which is 3D because it needs to stay in place. Okay, so these two will be good for that. And just to give you the idea about the final effect after mixing. Yeah, it goes like this with the gloss effect, with the glo um, glass glitter, and with the mica flake. Yes, and with the oops, glass beads. Whatever is dimensional, heavy grain, it will be nicely working with the 3D gels. So, matte or gloss doesn't matter, it will all be very sticky. Uh, what I want to show you uh, in the other section, the art sugar. So this one's ultra fine. They can be mixed with soft gloss gel. And then it looks almost like a paint. Okay? So let me demo that for you now. That's very easy. You just need again a piece of paper. And it depends what you prefer. You can see it's very, very fine, beautiful shimmering glitter. And you just create the amount you need for the project. You don't need to mix it in advance. So there are two ways. Some people will take a little bit and try to mix it on the side and create a little bit of the paint this way and then paint it and have this beautiful shimmery effect that's going to be iridescent. You can paint on the flowers, you can paint on the frames, whatever you like. And when you have it painted, it doesn't come off. So this is totally safe, nothing stays on your fingers. So perfect for people who want to uh, touch the projects later, okay? Or <laughs> the other way, and I think it's also cool, you just dip the paintbrush, dip the paintbrush, yeah, and dip, dip. And then you can just spread it quite nicely. Because it's very glowy, you create the resistant effect like this. So, um, of course, if you want to put art sugar into 3D gloss gel, you can. It's going to be the dimensional effect. It's going to be just dimensional effect. But this is only one we have that is that fine, that's very easy to paint with it. Okay? And when it comes to these ones, I think it is easier um, when you mix them into uh, the gel first and then you apply it. So what you do, you just take a plastic container, for example, for example, plastic cup, then you take the color you would like to use, for example gold, this is our uh, fine glitter, then you choose the finish, that's gloss, and 
you apply just the amount you're planning to use, so you don't have to worry that it will dry out. Uh, but if you have too much, you can put it in like a small plastic container from one dollar shop, and then it will be, you know, for the next usage. So then we just need to start sprinkling that the amount we want to into the container. Then you mix it, just like making a cake, right? <laughs> you mix it, like the poppy seed into the cake, right? And in the first moment, because gel is whitish, it doesn't look very pretty. But we know that the gels are transparent, so it's going to turn totally shiny, so it doesn't look that nice first. So you just... Okay. And then you can start applying. And because this gel is not too thick, it's very smooth to apply even if there is something in it. No problem. And if you want to use two of the stencils, this is very well used stencils, you can tell. <laughs> that. Okay. Here's a nice place. You just apply it through the stencil. Yeah. And then, again, if you are patient, you just leave it and it's getting dry. If you are not patient, you take the heating tool and you start drying it for a moment. I usually dry it for a moment to make sure I won't smear it by accident and then I leave it to dry. And you can see, the drier it is, the more shiny the glitter is. Right? So I have some examples for you to show when they dry. This is already dried, so you can touch it, nothing stays on the finger. It's totally safe and very nicely presenting because you can use it with the stencils, you can apply it directly, whatever uh, is will be nicer for you. Of course, different colors, different effects, right? Depending what you prefer. Of course, if you prefer to put a little bit of the gel and then sprinkle on the top and just touch it, it's also okay. Then it's going to be more loose, but still very nice. But I think this is very cool when you want to touch your project, so you don't have to be worried about the glitter going off. And this is extremely simple, like two ingredients ready. And um, these are the, uh, for example, examples of what you can do with the 3D gels and the art ingredients line we have. So different kinds of effects like glass glitter. Of course, this is more solid, so you need uh, a little bit more of the gel to create the dimension. Glass beads, again, they have the grain. So good advice if you're planning to put these through the...